Good morning, good afternoon, good evening, and welcome, Alliance of the World, to the Lead to Serve, Serve to Lead Virtual Academy. This first session is a session that is beginning a process, a learning journey that will be guided over the course of the next three years by our Vice President A.P. Singh and P.I.D. Sangeeta, who will be helping us learn and discuss the tenets of servant leadership. This is a program, the first of nine, that will be rolled out over the course of the next three years, where each of you as participants will have the opportunity to participate in a global conversation about servant leadership, to make reflections upon your thoughts, and most importantly, to share those reflections with the world. After the end of these nine sessions, of which there will be a certification for each one of those sessions, you will have the opportunity to graduate as a class of servant leaders at the international uh, convention in which a Vice President A.P. Singh uh, steps into the role of international president. Thank you so much for your time here, and I would like to turn over this conversation to PID Sangeeta. Thank you so much, Daniel. Together we can, says our international president, Brian. And today's theme is together we can serve better. This series in its entirety will focus on servant leadership on how to lead effectively in this century where the world has flattened and the leadership connotation has completely changed. He will bring to you insights from line leaders. And most importantly, we wish to hear from you, your views. In every session, we will have breakaway rooms. Do share your thoughts. Even if we cannot hear you today, does not matter. The moderators will be recording them and we will listen to them and definitely you will hear from, of them in the next sessions. So let's get started. In 1985, the then president, Joe Robleski, coined his theme, We Serve Better Together. Even after 37 years, it remains as relevant as it was at that time. As we start the series, who better to tell us about his theme than President Joe himself? He is here today with us in conversation with Vice President A.P. Singh. Vice President A.P., over to you. Thank you, P.I.D. Sangeeta. Good morning, good afternoon, good evening, my friends, whichever part of the world you are. And it's such a pleasure to be connected with you. Thank you, everybody else who's been helping us would be starting this series, which hopefully we would be continuing for the next three years. It is said, and I think it was Emerson who said it, that an institution is but the lengthened shadow of a man. And if we talk about Lions Clubs International, if there's been one man across the entire world, in all parts of the world, whose shadow this association has been, at least in the last 40 years, we can all say it's been no one else except past international president, Joe Robleski. And it's indeed a matter of pride and pleasure for us that we are going to be having the words of wisdom. I refer to them as the pearls of wisdom from past president Robleski. His theme was, we serve better together. And so my first question to past president Robleski is, why did you choose the word together? We serve better uh, together. This uh, idea uh, for the motto uh, began at home and it spread to my, to my community and most importantly to my Lions Club. Uh, the word together uh, struck a chord with me 
and uh, in every phase of my life, working together with others was my ultimate goal. I, uh, I found that working together in my business over the years, the work together just stood out by itself. And uh, we went over it many times, my wife and I, uh, and the, uh, uh, actually, uh, my wife, Norma Jean, was the word smith uh, who really helped me finalize my motto, we serve better together. Now, while I was doing all of this, and we were discussing it and trying to come up with something, I had Roy Schetzel was our executive administrator, and I told Roy what my thoughts were on the word together, uh, and uh, the fact that we serve is already part of what, what we're all familiar with, uh, and the word better came in, but I said, look, Roy, you're the executive administrator here. You have a number of divisional managers who deal with lionism every day. What I would like to ask you to do is set up a meeting of all your division managers and you when I come into Oak Brook the next time. We did that and I said, I want a brainstorming session. I told them about my thoughts as far as uh, serving and the word together in particular, and uh, uh, after probably uh, two or three hours, we went around and around, and uh, I came back with a lot of thoughts, ideas, words that I go back and go over with my wife, and uh, all in all, this is how, with her help, uh, the uh, she was the, the wordsmith who finalize my final motto, my motto that we serve better together. Uh, I used to uh, make comparisons in the personnel business in particular whenever people seem to work together and the word together keep, kept coming out uh, in all phases of, of my life uh, and this is really how we ended up doing all this. Thank you. Thank you, Past President Robleski. Thank you for letting us know. It's a very big secret that uh, it was your wife who was the wordsmith who coined this entire slogan of yours. And uh, associations really benefited from that. But let's continue with our conversation. So we spoke about the word together. Can you tell us how did better come about? I found that the togetherness was very prevalent in my Lions Club, in my daily life, in my business. Uh, it just seemed like it wouldn't go away and that that was the thing, that was the word really that uh, uh, we couldn't get away from. And we felt that uh, uh, if we did that, whatever we were doing, it would be better. So suddenly we had better and together. And then, of course, we got the We Serve in front of it uh, as a result of, uh, uh, of lionism overall. So let me say that whenever I saw a man or a woman, uh, really uh, for many years it was a man, uh, that I felt had the capability of handling our association uh, and had an awful lot to offer it, basically in leadership uh, and how they handle themselves as directors and committees that they were appointed to. Uh, if I saw someone, I'd start watching and listening, uh, paying attention to what they were doing, asking a lot of questions of their, uh, of whoever was uh, in charge of them and, what committee chair or what have you. And uh, those are the kind of people that uh, I indirectly uh, found
around and mention to other leadership of the officers there that uh, this is a is this is a good person that has leadership ability, uh, cares about what we're doing, cares about people, uh, and also very importantly, uh, I felt that uh, this uh, man at the time that we would be recommending would be, if possible, uh, not the word rotating, but from a different part of the constitutional area uh, as often as possible. If indeed, first and foremost criteria was that he had the ability, the leadership ability, and he's he's uh, shown that leadership ability when he was involved as a as a director. Uh, these are, these are some of the things that I look for. Uh, then, if I saw that person, I would start uh, trying to sell him to the other executive officers. And by way of sales, I meant for them to evaluate the individual. Let's put our heads together, see if what I'm saying is a fact. If it is, uh, let's let us go after them uh, and get our be- get better leadership in our association uh, the best we could possibly get. Thank you. Thank you, Past President Robleski. Uh, many of our friends who've joined from around the world, let me tell you that Past President Joe Robleski has been the anchor of international leadership in our association for more than three decades, almost just after he finished his term as an international president. He has been the person who has helped provide so much stability to the entire process of international leadership development, a a job, a task, which is almost inconceivable. And today, you have been so kind, Past President Robleski, in sharing that experience with us, how you made it possible. Your words sounded as if it was so simple, but then, you know, that entire process is not so easy and we do understand it. And you have provided that leadership of, uh, you know, leading from one individual to the other, from one part of the world to the other. And you have been that link, you know, essentially that has kept the entire leadership at the international level together. And you have been that role model. So, and the last question to you, Past President Robleski would be, do you believe leadership and service both are important in our organization? Uh, I, there's no question they're both very important for the, to the leadership. Uh, but you'll find that in most cases, if we go back a bit, uh, a lion, uh, the majority of them that have good leadership ability, came into the organization because they were service-minded. They wanted to do things in their community. They wanted to do uh, programs that would uh, it improve the, uh, the living standards, whatever it might be, in their backyard. And those are people you didn't have to tell anything to them about such potential projects. They had them on their mind. They wanted to do this, do that. And they felt that uh, many of them, we have a foundation here. We can do things that we weren't able to do before. Uh, we can improve the lives of people around the world. There are people in other constitutional areas that really need our help. Uh, almost everyone occasionally does, but there are some constitutional areas today yet that need our help desperately. And they have to be people that are willing uh, to give them that help by way of our foundation, by way of spending money. And they can't hold back and say, yeah, but the rest of the world is not getting that. Thank you. Thank you, Past President Robleski. We are indeed so much grateful to you for having joined us for this conversation. And, uh, you know, conventionally in in the Indian education system, there is a guru 
and all the students are the disciples and they would assemble and always like to listen to what the guru says because the guru has that that depth that wisdom which is much more than knowledge you today represent that wisdom of lions clubs international and thank you for the time and for all the thoughts that you have shared with us turning it back to you pid sangeeta that was indeed so interesting who would have thought that you would hear past president joe obleski and that was indeed fantastic taking it from there vice president ap what do you feel really encompasses servant leadership thank you for that question servant leadership is uh, about uh, being able to work together we have an organization which is so vast almost in every part of the world in every country and that organization has so much of vitality as it we we may say so much of potential but very often that potential has to be realized or if we may say it has to be mined and for the purpose of mining or realizing that entire potential we have to create the right environment and in today's world this environment cannot be created in my opinion through the pyramidal form of any association of any organization where we have one individual as if in the leader's position and everybody is working just as per the instructions of that one individual in today's world we need to move from the one individual mode to the team mode to the mode as some authors who are experts in servant leadership use the word the primus model where everybody is an equal but for some particular programs project for a small piece short span of time somebody would be uh, the first amongst the equals but then there's really not a difference that someone is above the other you will find that uh, i have often gone to the districts and i speak to my friends when we are speaking at district meetings that the zone chairs and the region chairs you do not have clubs under you you have clubs with you the zone chairs the region chairs the members of the dg team everybody they have clubs that they have to work with we work alongside everybody in this organization and as we work alongside in this organization to be serving is a something kind of a blessing and it is also everybody's responsibility one important thing that everybody who is occupying the position of that primus for that some point for that some you know for a certain period needs to remember is that never ask anybody to do unless you are willing to do that yourself this is not about this association is about voluntary membership it's about voluntary service we don't we cannot go on giving instructions that we expect the membership to do something if we are ourselves not ready to do it it's also been seen that lions across the entire world would not do what the lions tell what their leaders tell them to do they would do what they see that the leaders are doing so the lions are much more you know attuned to following the pathway of the action of the leaders not just the speeches or the words so we must be able to demonstrate what we expect from the lions and if we demonstrate that then we are truly entering that arena of servant leadership and while we act while we become even the you know sometimes uh, important uh, individuals or you know hold certain views whose views are respected or we become a part let me say we become a part and parcel of decision making let's remember all decisions that we make and whatever direction that we give must be such there's just one litmus test to it and that litmus test is can i own up this decision before my own family members before my own children if whatever i do in this association 
I can proudly go back home and tell my children or my grandchildren that this is what I do, then that's the right thing to do. There can be different opinions. Nobody knows what's the best way, but at least the conscience has to be clear. This is the right way. This is the right way to proceed. And very often, when we take certain positions in this organization, we believe that communication is about making ourselves understood. Communication at that time, if we are working with the qualities of servant leadership, is not about making ourselves understood. That could be the secondary factor. Primarily, it's about understanding the others. Communication has to be driven by that principle of understanding the others, being able to listen, being able to imbibe, and at times being able to even listen to the sounds of silence. At times in some meetings, in some congregations, when lions come together, there may be silence on a particular issue which is being discussed. And that silence may send out a very important, a significant message. That ability to be able to listen, to be able to create that environment, to be able to stand up as a role model, to be able to do things with a clean conscience, to be able to work with others without that, you know, without, without believing that I bear a particular badge that makes me put me in a position above the others. These issues, these are the connotations or these are the practicalities of servant leadership, at least as far as our organization is concerned. That was indeed interesting. But then, according to you, what do you feel? When a lion goes out, does he serve first or should he be leading first? How does it come? How does it flow? You look at the phrase itself, P.I.D. Sangeeta, it's servant leadership. Servant comes first. Leader follows. In fact, let's, let's look at a certain, let's look at it a little differently. The motto of our organization is we serve. And we proudly have maintained that motto. We live up to that motto. We serve in almost all 50,000 clubs of our association. When we say we serve, it is absolutely different from saying that we help. When we use the word we help, you know, at the back of our minds, in the subconscious, there is a gradation which is created as if, if I'm helping somebody, that means I'm in a better position, I'm in a higher position, I'm helping somebody who is not in so, such a good position, I'm helping somebody who's below me. So helping results subconsciously, whether we like it or not, as if there is something that one person owes to the other. But when we serve, you know, serving, it's like doubly blessed. It blesses him or her that serves. It also blesses him or her who is served. In, in serving, there is no question of owing something to anybody. It's a question of mutual gratitude. And this serving and leadership then merge together. You know, it's, it's, it's a philosophical concept. And at that point of time, you know, in the long run, when it merges together, just like in mathematics, two parallel lines never meet on paper. But in the, in the philosophy of mathematics, the two parallel lines meet at infinity. That is the philosophy of mathematics. So in the philosophy of our organization, service and leadership merges ultimately, and it becomes just one. But at the starting point, it has to be when every member starts, it has to be with that idea that I am here to serve. Leaders never enter this arena of Lions Clubs International. The true leaders have not entered with the intention of leading. They have always entered with the intention of serving. They do a great job in serving. And there's a recognition for such individuals who've done that great job. And that recognition is like a byproduct of that great service. And that recognition is termed as leadership. So that recognition follows. In fact, wherever the body goes, the shadow will always go. But it's the body that's important. 
The shadow is only what is cast upon the ground because there's light and there's body. The body here is that of service. The shadow is that of leadership. It will always be there. We can never separate one from the other, but the essence is that of service. But then in an organization like ours, where we have so much hierarchy, do you think it takes away from servant leadership? Do you think it is a deterrent to servant leadership? Uh, you're asking me about hierarchy? Okay. Hierarchy in our organization, yes. Okay, hierarchy in our organization. Thank you. Now that's, that's you know, taking the question to the next level. Uh, you know, hierarchy is sometimes linked to protocol in our organization. We got a protocol set. But what's the purpose of the protocol? The purpose of the protocol is to ensure or to make, you know, make, you know, we, 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 we need to set up a system that the organization works in a seamless manner. That's why the protocol has been set up. When we put up in the protocol that so-and-so person and so-and-so individual is higher in the protocol, this does not mean that individual is better than somebody who doesn't figure in that protocol. I mean, today I may be a third vice president, but someone, in, not why someone, hundreds and thousands of those lines in far-flung areas of the world, in their individual clubs, when they are working for the service program, then they are working with the service projects. It's they who are bringing that real glory to Lions Clubs International and individuals like me are just reflecting that borrowed glory. I have borrowed that glory from them. It's they who are working, but to run the organization, we need a structure. And for that structure, we have created those particular positions, but the positions do not mean that somebody is above the other or somebody is, uh, is better than the other. It's just a seamless way of working. According to me, sometimes I even, when I'm visiting districts and multiple district meetings, I often tell them, you know what, uh, what, what protocol is all about? If you are number one of the protocol, what does it mean? It definitely means that a center seat is reserved for you. You shall occupy that center seat for that year or two years when you are the highest in a protocol. But I tell them that actually it means something else. Actually, it means that if there is an emergency and some emergency relief has to be rushed, you will be the first one to get on the truck. Actually, it means that when we start fundraising, you will be the first one to put your hands in your pocket. Actually, it means that when we succeed in all our plans and our initiatives, you will be the last one to walk. Let everybody walk ahead and let them say, we did it. But if something goes wrong, you will be the first one to go right in front and say, I was leading and I accept responsibility. It's my failure. That's what protocol really means. That's what hierarchy means. It's not that somebody becomes better or somebody becomes higher because somebody is placed at a particular point in protocol. We are all lions and it's our privilege to serve along with lions, alongside with lions in every club, in all the 50,000 clubs of our association. We wish we didn't need the protocol, but then ultimately, you know, when we run organizations, you need it. You need it to run uh, the Vatican. You need it to run uh, the Hajj movement. You need it to run the Golden Temple in Amritsar. You need it to run the universities. You run, need it to run the great polytechnics and the great centers of learning. It's required, but that doesn't define in a service organization like ours that somebody becomes higher. It's all in the mind. That's the philosophy. The philosophy, the practicality would be one is above the other. The philosophy here would be that that structure is actually just an illusion. It's a pure illusion. It actually does not even exist in our organization. Once got to be driven with that philosophy, then there will be no issues at the ground level. So number one in protocol is the first responsible person, according to you. And that is what servant leadership, I guess, is all about. Very often we've heard you speak about the seven cardinal sins of leadership, as was probably coined by Mahatma Gandhi. 
Would you like to elaborate about it here? I mean, there's a certain linking between the two. Thank you for that question. You know, when we talk of minds of some of the great individuals, no matter which part of the world they come from, they, they will always converge. Gandhi was influenced by Tolstoy. Gandhi himself was the greatest influence for uh, Nelson Mandela or even for Martin Luther King Jr. These individuals have then been the source of inspiration for millions of people in the entire world. So their work and their words are both interrelated. What are Gandhi's seven principles, cardinal sins? Gandhi's seven cardinal sins are, number one, wealth without work. Number two, pleasure without conscience. Number three, knowledge without character. Number four, commerce without morality. Number five, science without humanity. Number six, religion without sacrifice. And number seven, politics without principles. Now, the entire world, whether we look at our, our organization or anything, wherever we are, you know, today being burdened, the world's been burdened with the kind of leadership that does cannot find the right solutions, it's because of these seven cardinal sins. In our organization, let me concentrate on just one important thing. When we talk of a leader in Lions Clubs International, let us remember the number one factor would be perhaps integrity and character, not charisma. We are often carried by a person's charisma, how well that individual dresses, how he looks, how she looks, how she speaks, how she conducts. We've got to go down to the basics and that's integrity and character. Charisma can at times be extremely misleading, but if charisma comes with character, it's a fantastic combination. But if charisma alone becomes the leading factor, that is where the entire structure of servant leadership falls flat. It's built up on that character. Gandhi had faith in what he was doing. There's a famous march that he was leading in India. In India, all of us know of that great march which Gandhi called and he asked the people of the country to join. He was leading that march. Individuals from the entire country had joined in. And then after some time, he realized that that march had not been, you know, it, had, it, it, it was not the best thing to do at that particular point of time. And he said, let's call off the march. All the people who were close to him and his closest confidence told him, you can't do that. There are thousands and thousands of people who've converged from the entire country because you call them here and now you can't call off the march. He said, it's not the march that's important. It's the march of truth that's important. And this I now realize is not the right time or the right thing to do. So it shall have to be called out. It takes a tough, it's a tough decision, a very tough decision. But then people who are so strong in their character can do it. People like us, we look up to them. We try to learn something from them and we pray to God Almighty that we can become at least a little bit of what such great leaders have been. Thank you so much for that. Indeed, fantastic. And a lesson to learn. We've got to rise above everything. Integrity is most important. This lines here, our international president, Brian Sheehan, is talking of together we can. Let us now hear as our vice president speaks to our international president on his theme, Together We Can. So thank you, President Brian, for joining us briefly today. Uh, can you tell us what is the message that you essentially want to send out to the world of lions, maybe the world in general, and what inspired you to choose this theme, Together We Can? Well, you know, it's very important for all of us to be working together in order to get things done. You know, we, when you try to do things on your own, it may be good for you, but when you can get so many more people involved, you get so many more ideas, you get so many more hands working together, you can take something that would happen very small and you can make it very large. You know, Together We Can AP has always been something I've really lived by my entire life. And it starts with your family. You know, I'm, I'm, I'm part of a, I'm the youngest of eight, and uh, we had a very large family, but my, my parents always taught us that we need to all work together in, in what we do. It's not individual accomplishments, but it's by working together. And then that instilled me to do that in my business as well, that I, I can't do things by yourself. 
when you get other people to help and you have to count on other people, you can grow things so much bigger. So in an organization like ours, Lions Clubs International, what are those important leadership traits which the leaders must possess so that we can really work together? You know, there's a lot of traits you have to have in being a leader. You know, the first thing is you have to be able to earn people's trust. And you do that by being very honest, being very transparent in the things that you do. And I think the biggest thing is, because I also own a business too, and there's really a big difference in being a manager versus being a leader. And being a manager, I will listen to everybody and I will get all of their ideas and input but when it comes right down to it, I'll make the decision on what I feel is best for me and my business. But when you're a leader, you listen to everybody else, you take that input, but as a group and as a team, you decide on what will work best and what you're trying to accomplish. And, and I think that's very important for our organization that we have to be able to lead by example. We have to be able to, to have a little bit of fun when we lead as well. But uh, the main thing is you have to be able to have a vision on what you're going to accomplish and you got to be able to have a plan in order to accomplish the things that your vision sees and then you've got to be able to execute that plan. What we are seeing is that you are able to get the teams to come together and uh, your decisions never appear to be just your personal decisions, they appear to be your team's decision. So does it come to you naturally or have you imbibed certain leadership traits or maybe learned some leadership traits over the last many years that help you do this? You know, I don't think it came to me naturally. A lot of it is by trial and error. And again, I did that with uh, my education, with the things that I do locally in our community, but mostly I learned from uh, in my business where people were sometimes afraid to come to me because I was very busy and they didn't want to bother me and all that. and. I saw that that's got to be different than that. You have to be approachable. You have to be able to extend yourself out in order to have people give you the input and give you ideas in order to be able to do so. I, I really think I learned a lot of those skills because again, there's different leadership skills and different leadership types. And if you don't have people following you and trying to accomplish the things that you want to do, you're not a leader. I think the biggest thing that I have learned is leadership instills new leadership and leaders create leaders and I've learned how much of a difference that is because of this Lions organization. This Lions organization has given us so many benefits and you just have to look and see what those benefits are but the biggest thing is it's given me organizational skills it has told me how to lead it has opened me up to so much new family and you see what the results are by having that family all working together we see you mingling with the lions mixing with the lions uh, you know younger lions senior lions individuals who joined the movement only recently individuals who've been there for many many years and you uh, make yourself so much at home with all of them i mean how do you how does that chemistry work you know, I, I gotta tell you, I think one of the things I'm most proud about is I went to my midwinter convention, my district convention this last summer, and they made a badge up for me that said, just Brian. And that's exactly what I am. I'm no different than anybody else. And we all want to be able to do the same things and help humanitarian efforts. And we're all in this together. There's no level or anything else. A lion is a lion and a Leo is a Leo. And that just means so much. And I, I, I have to tell you, I've had so many people going through this journey that told me if I ever change, they're gonna sit here and they're, 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 gonna, they're gonna hit me. And uh, because it's so important to keep your morals and keep your values and keep your feet on the ground and just be who you are and be a lion. So it, it, I'm, I'm worried that if I change, people will, <laughs> <laughs> well, hit me. <laughs> thank you. Thank you very much. Thank you for your time and this these wonderful comments. Uh, I mean, coming from an international president that you are proud of wearing that badge, just Brian sends out a very strong message to the world of Lions. Sometimes technology just takes us over us. And you know, president is traveling all over the world. So catching him is really difficult. And it took some catching, didn't it? So now we will go off to the breakout room discussions. 
please share your ideas with the moderator in the room and we will come back to the room again together to discuss what you have discussed you will have 20 minutes and the theme today is how can we serve better in the light of servant leadership just as you've heard our vice president our president and of course past president joe robleski speak so we will now wait to as each one of us are taken to our breakout rooms and you will have moderators there. Enjoy the conversation and we will be back again in this room together in 20 minutes. And welcome back. I have gathered and selected some of the, the moderators to help share their thoughts of what uh, VPAP and, and PIP uh, Joe and, and the international president Brian have shared with us today on servant leadership. And in beginning to talk about how we can serve uh, better. So Lion uh, Andrea, could you please uh, share with us uh, your thoughts and what had occurred uh, during uh, your discussions? Thank you, Daniel. Uh, First, thanks to everybody that was a, a part of uh, Breakout Room 12. Uh, we did speak a bit about uh, uh, servant leadership and our impression from uh, Vice President A.P. Singh, uh, Vice President Joe Roblevsky, and International President Brian. And uh, everybody learns or understands now that it's about uh, working with uh, real human beings or treating real human beings because uh, we are uh, not dealing with targets, not dealing with uh, readers, not dealing with buyers, uh, everyone, even uh, our beneficiaries, they are all real human beings and we need to treat them as such. Uh, and to support this, I would share a personal story. Uh, Lions has always been uh, a family for me. Uh, I started uh, to the exact month 23 years ago. Uh, and two years after I joined my uh, Leo club, uh, I was going through uh, a very difficult uh, phase of my personal life. My father passed away. My, Leo, my Leos were uh, my go-to group to support me through, uh, through that period. And uh, slowly but surely, Lions became my family. Uh, a few years back, I was supposed to be a group leader uh, for one of our past presidents, and I had a minor medical incident that prevented me from flying to St. Charles and leading that group there. Uh, so I had to uh, inform the uh, vice president that I'm not going to make it and that he will have to look for another person. But that was uh, obviously discussed uh, between the officers and the husband of uh, the sitting international president at that time calls me two days later to ask me how I'm doing, which means that Lions is family, that we do care about each other, which is what I did this summer uh, when I was uh, missing past president uh, Jimmy Ross and uh, LCI Con in Montreal. I started reaching out to talk to him, ask him how is he doing, and is everything going well with him and his family? This is what servant leadership is all about. My favorite quote, and this was also mentioned uh, uh, in a different way or explained in a different way in our breakout room, is Tom Peters, who says, leaders don't create followers. They create more leaders. Because if we do treat people as our followers, then we have not achieved anything. Compassionate. Uh, uh, emotions or uh, working with peers alongside peers is, uh, has for a long time been uh, seen as an individual characteristic. But we are an organization and we are in the service of helping others, of serving others, serving our communities. And we are also having those features as an organization. This is or what servant leadership is all about uh, for us. Finally, uh, what I can do to summarize the whole discussion is to rephrase Simon Sinek, actually. He says, working hard for something we, uh, we don't care about is called stress. It's also called the job. We do care about the benefit of the job. 
But we are lions. We do work for the cause, not for the applause. And the benefit of lions is being with friends or building your family, enlarging your family. And working hard for something that you love is called passion. Lions is a group of passionate people that are passionate about what they do. So this is what servant leadership is all about for us uh, or uh, what uh, it's all about uh, for the lions. And thank you for sharing those reflections. I would just like to acknowledge all of the incredible comments that are currently being shared in the chat. Uh, please make sure uh, to take the time to read those. Uh, we will be saving the chat. And if possible, for everyone who has been a part of this conversation, if you could post your own personal reflections on your Facebook page and use the hashtag lead to serve and share it on the Global Lions Forum and share it uh, wherever uh, lions congregate and gather in a virtual space so that others can can know what was said and discussed here. And and with that, uh, let us let us turn uh, to uh, uh, Lion Ruth and apologies. I know you all have great titles, but we are all lions here. So Lion Ruth, uh, can you please uh, share your thoughts? Thank you, Lion Daniel. And uh, everyone in our breakout room agreed to what uh, VPAP Singh uh, talked on uh, servant leadership, that it is about, uh, first and foremost, the word servant comes before leadership. So really, it is about service first before uh, going for positions in, in our organization. And he also mentioned about it is more about listening. So while I was in the breakout room, I was able to listen to many of those who are in the room and uh, some of the important uh, views and opinions that I have listened to are from PTG Zainab, who, who expressed that leadership is really about standing together side by side with our uh, followers with our with people that we want to motivate that we want to to lead and the people that we we want to carry to fulfill a, a common goal and uh, also from uh, lion nagaraju from hyderabad india he mentioned about the word servant the root the word comes from the root word service so serve so initially we are here in our organization as a servant because we want to serve. So then we we proceeded into being a leadership, that's the word servant leaders. So he talks about uh, uh, making it, making a good attitude on how we see ourselves before our fellow volunteers. And also from uh, Lion Antoine from Lebanon, he mentioned about the word character because if we uh, uh, integrate our soul to our work as servant leaders in our organization he says we will make a better impact we will serve to get we, we will serve better we will lead better if we integrate our soul into uh, what we do and uh, lastly from lion anil goraja from uh, mumbai india He's, he mentioned that because membership in our organization is by invitation, so when a member agrees to join our organization, he is ready to put himself into service. So uh, good leadership and good uh, leadership, uh, leadership in our organization will, would create, he says, would create a better impact in our uh, communities in our respective communities and he emphasizes on the word humility humility among our members among our leaders because we have to set to be a role model for all the people in in our clubs in our districts in our multiple districts in our constitutional area so 
when wherever we we go wherever we serve or we wherever we lead humility should always be there so that is how i summarized all the inputs that i got in our breakout room and thank you uh, for sharing those thoughts and thank each of you lions uh, who participated uh, so uh, lion renata uh, would you like to share uh, your thoughts and some of the conversation that occurred in your breakout Yes, I would like to, to do that. And it was very interesting to listen to Andrea and Ruth because lots of what you said was also in our room, but I try to add something. And the keywords of our really lively conversation in room three, uh, the keywords were teamwork and leading by example and encouragement, empowerment, of your team and also new members and young members. Uh, I think this was very, very good. And because as leaders, we serve all other lions. So we serve, serving, we always think about what we do in the community, but we are also serve in our organization to all other members. I think that, oh yeah, there was one other, uh, not a slogan, a sentence, what I think what summarizes the two is as a leader, one of the participants in our room said, you are the first servant. And I think that rounds it up. The first servant, yes. Yeah, thank you very much. Absolutely, and, and I think that is something uh, that is important uh, to recognize is that uh, humility is our greatest power. That's where we ga gain our strength from. We are the servants of, of others. And, and it, no matter what the title, district governor, council chair, uh, it is not a position of power. It is one of service and uh, responsibility. And that's, I think, one of the, the key notes that uh, the Vice President AP uh, shared is that you know the person who has that title in that hierarchy needs to be the first person to accept responsibility, not just for the wins, but also for the times in which things uh, could be improved upon. And so uh, we have gathered uh, some amazing thoughts and I've just been collecting it's important to voice. Every lion's voice matters. This is a, a, an incredible you know, thing that we have to acknowledge. And unfortunately, due to the technical limitations of a conversation like this, uh, we can't uh, feature them all. But there have been some incredible thoughts that have just been, been shared uh, in there. Um, uh, to be a good follower uh, it, it is also to be a good leader. You must know uh, your follower. And uh, I love that that concept. And then uh, we have people who who said, uh, you know, it is about creating an example. You are that example. Treat and listen to everyone equally, and you should be able to reach and serve every last lion in in the queue. And that comes from a PID uh, Asanje. Uh, uh, from Nepal, who was sharing the thoughts. We had uh, thoughts that are coming from breakout room one uh, with, with PID Mark Lyon. Uh, this is great. Need to be respectful of all. That we need to be a quiet leader to listen. And I think that has come up in a couple of contexts. The importance of listening. Shared leadership, shared leadership is critical. It's about walking the talk embodying these principles and move from a we help philosophy to a we serve philosophy, addressing the values of serving from the heart. Uh, and this is a part of the conversation. So uh, take a moment to scroll through uh, the, the chat and then I hope everybody will share this because this is the beginning of a conversation that should last for the rest of our lifetimes. So thank you all uh, for joining in the moderated uh, conversation here, uh, Andrea and, and Ruth and Renata. And I would like to uh, just bring back up our uh, overall session hosts and moderators uh, as we 
uh, bring this session uh, to a close. And so turning it over uh, to you to say uh, your final thoughts on what you have heard and what you have experienced. Thank you, Daniel. Uh, it's been a wonderful experience, I would say. It's uh, technology makes it so simple that where the world congregates. Uh, we, you often use the word earlier, global village. And uh, I would often, you know, make a comment that if anyone wants to really experience the global village, the individual must come to our international convention. That's really the global village. Individual lines from all parts of the world speaking different languages, different cultures, different backgrounds, different preferences, but everybody bound by that same spirit, the spirit of serving, serving together to make this world a little better than what we inherited. That's what keeps us together. But then uh, those conventions come just once a year. We can't go to, and everybody cannot even go to every convention. So events like this, uh, Daniel, you and your entire team, uh, some names we know, there may be others that we don't even know. Thank you for everything, for getting us together. This was also a great example of a global village. And thank you everybody for your comments that you have brought forward. Over to you, Sangeeta. Thank you so much. Yes, the conversations were so brilliant. And as you see the chat box, you can't help but feel good about it all. People from all over the world coming together, though we know it's just English, but at times, even the language barrier, we will work on it and you will see how we can break that language barrier too. And maybe start conversing through the Google Translate. Who knows what technology has in store for us or rather what Daniel and Jody have in store for us with Lions Virtual. They have done a fantastic job getting us all together and we will be doing this not once, but thrice this year and the next and the next as we move on with the concept of servant leadership, talking to our past presidents, talking to our executive officers, talking to lions who matter and listening to their experience and the next session coming to you very soon. What's the date, Daniel? It's right there. 25th February, the same time, 2023, 25th February. That's the next one where we will again come back with to you with the Lead to Serve, Serve to Lead series, Lions Virtual Leadership Academy. And here, signing off from Kolkata and from for you from all over the world, thank you for joining in. We'll see you again. But keep thinking, keep sharing your thoughts, keep posting it on the Lions Virtual um, Facebook page if you must. You can share on your emails, whatever but let the conversation keep going till we meet again on February 25th, 2023, same time, same place. You just have to register.